music be cut. Great, thank you. Um, hi everyone and welcome to the second session of Our Bodies in the Commons. It's really lovely to see you all here today. Thanks for coming even though the sun is shining out today. Um, it's the first time we've gathered in three years and personally it's the first time I've gathered as a part of Performing Borders because I joined during the pandemic so it's really nice to meet uh, friends that have been with the platform for a long time. Um, hi to the people also joining us on the live stream. Um, for those of you that are new to Performing Borders and don't already know us, we're a curatorial research project led by Xavier de Sousa, Alessia Netti, and myself, and my name is Anaï Sarabia Herrera. <laughs> my name is Anaï Sarabia Herrera. Thank you. Um, and it's a project that explores the relationship between live art and intersectional and transnational borders. We're all here for the reading karaoke, Rustling Words, um, a session that takes our second e-journal, Rallying the Commons, as its starting point in the exploration of commoning and communing, moving beyond disembodied discourses of care and solidarity to suggestions of practices and models that bring back material, um, bring us back to the immediate and also bring us back to our bodies. We're joined today by Jung Suk Choi, who is going to be our guide for the afternoon, as well as e-journal contributors Helena Walsh and Jimena Alarcón Díaz, as well as Harren Morrison, who will all make interventions this afternoon. Uh, you should all have a handout, um, and if not, there are some more over here, with information and a QR code to the e-journal for you to look at now or later. Um, today's session will run between 4 and 6 p.m., after which we'll end with a short screening um, of a performance to camera. As you will see, we have VSL interpretation. If any folks need it, please feel free to move closer to the lovely Debbie and Rachel who are supporting us here today. And um, if you're sitting elsewhere and would like to move up front, just let one of us know and we'll make space for that. Live captioning is also available for the audience online, thanks to the National Captioning Institute. And just before we begin, I'm just going to do a couple notes on the venue. So our host, BAC, is a relaxed venue, which means that you're welcome to move and make noise, and you don't need to feel constrained by the context of a theater. Um, you can come and go as you need from this room, go to the bathroom, go get some snacks, go get some water, and that's totally fine. That also means that uh, there might be some late joiners um, who come in, uh, so yeah, be prepared for that too. Um, and there's also a quiet space on the first floor of the building if you would need, and if you would like one of us to take you there, um, either ask a PV person, so that's me, Shav at the back, Ale in the lovely yellow, uh, or Ella, who is also at the back. Um, so any of us can help you access the quiet space, just let us know. Um, the last thing is that there is photography during the event, so that's Jane over there, um, who will be taking some photos of the interventions and of the afternoon. Um, we hope that's okay with everyone, but of course, if you don't wanna be in images, that's completely fine. Just kind of signal with your body or let Jane know verbally that you would like to be excluded from the photos. Um, yeah, and that's how you can uh, yeah, communicate that to us. We also have live streaming in place, as you've seen the cameras at the back. Um, so that's what those are for. And those are being streamed onto HowlRound Theatre Commons, um, which is really cool. Um, the final thing is that we do ask that everyone in the audience is respectful towards each other, towards the performers, and towards the staff. And that everybody in the room, as well as online, um, is collectively you know, trying to build and respectful of a safe space or as safe a space as we can possibly make um, these shared spaces. So I think that is everything on my list. I might, um, Ella, is there anything else you would like to add before we begin?
Great, so I think that's everything. Ying Suk. Hello. Hello, friends, dears, and darlings. Welcome, everyone. Everyone, I mean everyone in this room. Physically, spiritually, and those in our hearts. Welcome, everyone, to Rustling Words Reading Karaoke. But what is really reading karaoke? <laughs> Let's first talk about the, the usual karaoke, as we know. Karaoke is, is not really singing competition to verify who's the best singer in the room. It's often joy practice. It's often the opportunity to take out what's lingering in our chest through singing usual repertoire. And crucially, it comes with the trust. Trust upon people in the room that they would cheer for me. They would be empathetic. They would be emotionally present to my singing voice. So we're going to apply this intimate care structure to our collective reading. So that's the reading karaoke we are trying to bring together. So don't just fold your arms and sit back. <laughs> we will need the voice of every one of you in this room. And so now we're wondering, what is our repertoire tonight, to today? And um, as we know, first of all, we are here to celebrate the Performing Borders second journal, Rallying the Commons. So based on that, we're gonna, we, we have a fantastic lineup in our reading karaoke book. First, we have a set of collective reading sections by using the extracts from the art articles. And these sessions need all of your voices. We also have a three fabulous artistic contributions from Elena Welsh, Harun Morrison, and Jimena Alacundias. Elena Harun Jimena will introduce embodied readings through the acts of domestic labor, sonic ritual, and olfactory reading. How exciting. Your microphone is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, because it's, this is reading Arabic, and of course the stage is open for anyone who wants to share their own reading. It can be your own writing or it can be any prompt you want to share at this moment in this room. So think about it. Yeah, take the, take the moment. And so next slide, please. So we will start with the first set of collective reading. It's kind of a little word game involving the extract from the journal introduction written by the Performing Borders team, uh, Anai, Alessandro, and Xavier. As you can see, one word is redacted. And our job is to guess or imagine or simply replace the word to reclaim this blank space. The hint for this word is this. The hint for this word is <sighs> So let's read this text out loud together, like a sing along, and replace the redacted word with your long end of day tiredness kind of sigh. Shall we try the sigh first? Three, two, one. <sighs> Amazing. <laughs> High quality audience. <laughs> so we're going to read the text and then and replace that redacted part with our sigh. But before that, um, think of the, the pace of reading. Not everyone has the same pace of reading. And to many of us, English is not mother tongue. And also, some of us have, have dyslexia. So listen to other voices as well while you're reading through this text and find the kind of right pace of re reciprocity. So ready to read along? Because this is not karaoke. We don't have any backing track. So, <laughs> <laughs> so th th this, this bell will be our, our kind of signal to commence our collective reading. Yeah, ready? So I'm going to chime three times, and then we all start reading together.
Beautiful. Now, reflect what your commons are like and how they are doing currently. And think of what word could sum up or represent your commons right now. There are small papers and pens around. You can write down the word in your mind regarding your commons and how they are doing and then put it into our collective intelligence box that will be circulating around. So have a moment to think about your commons. What are my commons or communities? I mean, commons can start from our own body. Can you also please think of the sound that corresponds the word you are writing on the paper? And of course, while we're thinking, writing, and, and gathering all our answers together, the, the microphone is open for the audience who wants to try the reading karaoke. So don't be shy. <laughs> Can you circulate the box so to collect the, the words people wrote? Fantastic. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll need your help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're gonna try is to, to make up collective poetry reading by randomly picking up the word and whoever wrote that word also needs to make that corresponding sound and the rest of us will emulate that sound with a great deal of empathy. So so it, the poetry writing kind of rolls in a, in, a, in a pair of words and sound. So the word, singular sound, and the emulating collective sound. Shall we try that? Yeah. Okay, this is, this is interesting. Uh, the commons are intimal. Int. 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 The commons are threatened and important. Commons are stolen. Mm. Commons are peace. Ah. The 
commands are unbearable. The commons are messy. <laughs> the commons are the sound of held breath. The commons are vibing. Zzz. <laughs> the commons are dispersed. Oh no. oh no! The commons are hopeful. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> the commons are depleted. The commons are joy. Ah. The commons are exhausted. The commons are rescinding. The commons are friendship. <laughs> the commons are still fighting. The commons are happiness. Yay! Yay. <laughs> the commons are feeling. The commons are commodified. Why? Why? The commons are waning. Again, the commons are exhausted. Commons are life. Commons are porous. Yeah. Commons are liminalities. Commons are take care. Commons are, don't forget to breathe. Commons are, together. Commons are, open-mindedness. Commons are, emotion. Commons are my body. <laughs> Commons are waiting. Commons are dispersed again. Commons are Commons are displaced. Commons are dormant. So what was the original uh, word redacted? Can you move to the next slide? And 
stroke any key to reveal? Yeah, yeah. It, our commons are exhausted. I cannot find any better word than, than this right now. I mean, in the time we're living. Um, our commons are fucking exhausted, and Elena's contribution embodies our exhausted commons through a performative reading of undervalued, invisible, and almost never-ending labor of care. Here's Elena's reading invites audience participation in the series of acts, so prepare your hands, get dirty. <laughs> Elena Walsh. Hello everyone, so there's a lot of work to be done today and I hope that you will work with me in solidarity. <laughs> Feminist, artists and activists make care visible, make labor visible, make resistance visible. Performing care, performing labor, performing resistance. Performing care, performing labor, performing resistance. Somebody would like to come and help me? Wash the laundry? Thank you so much. Here's an apron for you. Here's some gloves. <laughs> Feminists, artists, and activists work collectively, create networks of care, forge solidarity across borders, Fighting for labour rights. Fighting for representation. Fighting for reproductive rights. Would somebody like to come and help wash the other bottle? Wages for housework. <laughs> the Gorilla Girls. Women's Art Action Group. Northern Irish Women's Artist Group. Irish Women's Artist Link. Irish Women's Abortion Support Group. Speaking of Imelda, Array Collective, the artist's campaign to repeal the Eighth Amendment, feminists, artists and activists have 
kicked open the door of cultural institutions, demanded visibility for women and marginalised identities, challenged patriarchal systems of representation. And all the while, and all the while, we fight to keep this door open, to hold it 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 open. Would somebody like to come and mash potatoes? <laughs> Thank you. Cultural work is often voluntary. Cultural work is often unpaid. Cultural work is often precarious. Cultural work is often insecure. And there's a cost of living crisis. And there's rising inflation. And wages have stagnated. And we are tired. So tired, so tired, so tired, so tired, so bloody tired! Would somebody like to help with the grating? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And all the time, we are washing, cleaning, mashing, cooking, cradling, washing, cleaning, cooking, mashing, 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 cradling. Would somebody like the cradle for me? <laughs> washing, cleaning, cooking, mashing, cradling, washing, Cleaning, cooking, mashing, cradling, washing, cleaning, cooking, mashing, cleaning. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should strike, 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 strike. What are we doing? <laughs> Thanks, Elena Ann, and the audience who participated. <laughs> Strike! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is quite, quite emotional, isn't it? Just looking closely, you know. So in this exhausted, messy, murky commons, care becomes a highly political matter because it's, it, it becomes about how we make our space and time 
and more crucially, how we relate to one another. So here comes the second text. Next slide, please. The second set of collective reading. Oh, I forgot my. Uh, this reading is coming from Hevalti, Revolutionary Friendship as a Radical Care, written by Eric, Sar Eric Elif Sarikan and Diladiric. Um, so let's read out first together. So I'll chime the bell three times again. Great, so for this round of collective reading, we can think of uh, various methods of radical care. What methods make us to stop, pause, and turn our heads around for better taking care of ourselves and others around us? What methods of care could go against the grain of capitalism that keeps, re keeps reducing our bodies, lives, relationships, and commons to mere resource for profit making. It doesn't have to be the grand idea or theory or discourse. It can be simply your regular drinking gathering. It can be a cooking recipe linked to your heritage. It can be your allotment practice with your neighbors, or simply WhatsApp message, WhatsApp group message towards your effective group. So again, write down the, you know, your method of radical care, whether small or grand, on your paper, and then we'll gather the, the, our collective intelligence together again. Yeah, the, the methods of radical care. And I mean, how do you take care of uh, yourself or others? Or how do you, how, I mean, how other people take care of you? It can be, it can be very small thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to write sound, just the method. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, also just let you know whenever the microphone isn't occupied, it's all yours. So this time, we're going to pass around this box, and then each audience will pick up the, the uh, method randomly, and then read out loud, so maybe microphone can travel together. And, but between the words, I'm going to chime the bell just to provide a little space of digesting the method. Yeah? Yeah. We can start with Elena. Saying no, saying yes, making time, being kind, closing one eye. <laughs> Voice messages, texts, sharing food, listening, holding space, sleep, stretching, meditation, Hugs, sunshine, sounds of rain. Accepting. Eating together. Harm reduction. Mutual aid. Checking in, listening, not advising. Cooking. Attunement. Gathering together and collective singing. What if you rested instead? <laughs> Refusal. Representation. Allowing space for ranting and vitriol. <laughs> Sharing um, moments of joy. Promiscuousness. <laughs> Drinking tea together.
listening to others and others listening to me. For me, radical care has been solitude. Therapeutic chilling time with the cat tickling her under her chin. We should take breaks from work as often as we can and we should help others to take breaks from work. Friendship. Ethical foraging. <laughs> Cooking for others. Thank you. Having solidarity, having solidarity with others, having each other's back. <laughs> it's lit enough. It's lit enough. <laughs> Feed each other, strangers even better. Mm. The NAP Ministry, rest to resist grind culture. Yeah, we can carry on. Yeah. yeah. Fostering spaces, relationships with ethical, radical communication at the priority. Uh, slow walking, breathing, listening to everything, everyone without judgment, meeting friends every weekend. Group cooking and group eating. <laughs> Walking mindfully through the city. <laughs> Organize your community outside of hierarchy. Picking up my friend's prescription from the pharmacist, calling them when they need company, giving them a place to sleep when they are homeless. Reading for pleasure. Great, what a treasure box. Um, so keeping all these beautiful methods of care in our hearts, we're going to take a 15-minute break. But this is also a fair chance to engage yourself in olfactory reading offered by Harun. 
Uh, Harun, in this journal, Rallying the Commons, Harun uh, contributed a chapter about alternative reading and embodiment of colonial histories. So let's find out how the particular smell invokes or even dictates uh, the histories and, and our memories around the histories. So please encounter uh, Harun's offering and have a good break and come back by quarter past five. Yeah. Did you have a good break? <laughs> I hope you had a chance to engage yourself with the Harun's olfactory reading, and I forgot to say what it was about. And but it could be kind of a surprise if you actually tried all different col the dif the collection of different uh, scents. Uh, Harun basically tried to bring the collection of uh, smells. Uh, that are related to popular imagery of a Caribbean island. So, yeah, basically, Karen's kind of trying of kind of invoking the stories and memories and our kind of popular imagery around a certain geography because we all know the smell has a connotation with a certain ecology and the geographies, and therefore, the, you know, the histories and stories connotated to, to certain ecology and geographies. So, if you haven't, Please try and you know, find a moment to, to engage yourself. So the second part of reading are okay. We are going to share readings about resources. Very important, isn't it? Resources and collective agency and the practical questions around the care, especially for the cultural and arts practitioners. First, resource. To rally the commons, we need the resources but not the resource defined by our, our bank accounts or institutional fundings, but the one that radicalizes the very idea of resource itself. So in the journal, there are two articles suggesting alternative visions around resource and budget. Jackie Tan wrote Budget Commission that touched upon the cultural and social dimensions of budget. And question of funding, wrote about daira, daira as the idea of circulating communal economic values, and how we can transform the idea of debt, debt into a positive narrative of community building. It's interesting, isn't it? Debt into community building, which forms our last collective reading session. Can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So, as we all learned, we're gonna read out together after three chimes of the bell. We all are indebted to summon to sustain our living and practice. So let's take a moment for this. Who are my communities and what am I indebted to them? This uh, acknowledgement of indebtedness and sense of gratitude are often what makes us resilient and celebratory as a communities. Who saved you when you're in the dark place? Have a moment to think of your critical debt and write a short story of your indebtedness in a few sentences. So you can find a small paper and a pen you used to before. Yeah, I mean, the story of your indebtedness, that, yeah, who, who are you indebted to? So try to make a simple, short, and matter of fact, because, you know, sometimes the story of that can be highly emotional as well.
If it regards to a person, maybe you can spell out the name of the person. If it regards to the certain community, yeah, just spell it out with a sense of gratitude. It can be a very particular moment as well. Someone says, hello, and how are you? So simply, when you're, when you're in a really dark place, or someone asks you to do something together, it can be a very particular moment with a particular relationship or part with a with you know, particular someone. I guess many people uh, wrote down their stories, so I'll chime the bell as an invitation of your story because I think uh, the story of indebtedness is, is quite personal and emotional, so I think you should keep that story to yourself. So instead of kind of circling around the story, I'll invite for you to share. So whoever wants to share, just give signal to, to have microphone. Does anyone? Anai. Is, is a wireless microphone around? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I am indebted to the people before me that made it possible for me to exist authentically, to love who I love. I'm indebted to the people that fight for justice now 
and embody the potential political horizons I dream of. I wouldn't be the self I am today without them. I'm indebted to the community. I'm indebted to my mum. She brought me to points of great learning when I needed it the most without me realising till afterwards. I'm indebted to my friend Eva Friedman. Uh, when she asked me, do you want to do a fun workshop about history of alcohol? when I was a suicidal mom with a two-year-old baby. And yeah, and we built illegal still. That was the best moment of my life. <laughs> I am indebted to the warmth and kindness of a stranger called Danny. When I locked myself and my toddler out of my flat without my keys, the woman house-sitting for my neighbor uh, welcomed me and my toddler into her home, gave me tea and her baby's buggy for my toddler to sleep in. Uh, I'm indebted to my friends, two of them are actually sitting next to me. Um, who visited me in hospital, um, who supported me in the scariest time, basically. I don't know why that made me choose that, but I don't know. I'm indebted to my parents, but uh, this morning, or maybe it was yesterday, I was thinking, Alessandra Cianetti has supported me in so many ways. I wish there was something I could do for her. <laughs> I'm indebted to you, all of you for listening. Great, I think uh, it was quite a great moment. Also quite emotional to think about you know, how much we actually indebted to people around us and how much support actually we having from them throughout rainy days of our lives. And you know, even if the life looks perfectly fine and surface sometimes the inside is not like that. So yeah, we need to have that support and we need to become that support. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's beautiful for, you know, sharing your story of indebtedness. So speaking of indebtedness and community building through it, I think the, the sense of uh, collective agents is such a foundation for, for, you know, this community building through uh, the sense of indebtedness. So the next contribution is from Jimena. Jimena will take us through the sonic ritual where we can build our collective agency temporarily at this moment, right now. Jimena Alacondias. And you, you will need to scan the QR code to take part in this making of a collective agency. Okay. Thank you. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really happy uh, to be here and also about the being indebted to listening. I think it was a, 
amazing introduction, chance introduction to what will happen. Um, so I will first invite you in your phones, if you can just open this uh, QR code. Um, you just open it. You don't need to do anything else at the moment. Just to be sure that. Okay. Okay, and you just you leave your phone. Relax. So, invitation now. We are going to do a kind of a warm up. Um, the ones who feel comfortable standing, I'll invite you to stand up. The ones who want to remain seated is fine too. So, just to be here with our full body. So I'll invite you to, even if you are seated, just to have your feet uh, shoulder distance apart. And just to be here, breathe. Feel your feet on the ground. The connection. And with your right hand, I'll invite you just to do some little tapping in your left shoulder. Just recognizing that part of your body is between a tap and carries. <laughs> and then we go down, down the arm, just gentle but firm. So the body know we are here. And then we come back to the other side. Activating circulation. And then we invite the other hand to do the same with the other side. Mm -hmm. We go down. Take our palms and just warm lots of caloric energy more than the one that we already have. And then with our fingertips, we just tap our forehead, the top of the head, and then we go back to the skull here, just tapping. And then we come back for head at the temple. And now with these warm hands, we are going to carry this area of the kidneys, which is really big area. It's a nice area to rub when we are kind of in fear. And um, they are known by Chinese uh, traditions as the gate of life too, so it's good. And now with the same palms, we just throw in our hands. the biggest muscle in the world. And then we go and down. And then we come back in the front and the feet, the ankles, go up, the knees. And then we go up. And then here, gentle like a smile, like a drum. And then bringing more life here. And then we wash all this energy. And just feel the body. 
what woke up. What is dormant? Just breathe. So in that state, I invite you to recall and immerse in the best ever dream, unconscious dream, that you have had. Could be at any age, dreams are timeless. Just bring it to your memory. The one that arrives <coughs> is the one that needs to be here. comes to your memory, just bring it to your body. Feel the sensations that this bring uh, the dream com uh, brings. Colors, textures, sounds. from this memory of the dream, select in your mind two words. If you can in your native language, that would be great, or in any language you know. the eyes closed, I invite you to softly open it and in your own time grab your phone and type <coughs> in that window these two words. We are populating a collective <coughs> sea of dreams. When you have Given your words, just contemplate the common dreams. It seems we have the, wow, it's coming more. <laughs> the sea is moving. more and if you have already contributed to the sea of dreams also for the next part I invite you to stand up or if you want to stay seated to dream okay it seems anyone needs a bit more of time 
Okay. So the next invitation with this Sea of Dreams um, is a performance called Grounding from the Sea of Dreams. And this is, is, a, is a voice, um, a score or invitation ritual, um, which is in English and is in Spanish, my native language. So if you understand uh, Spanish, uh, great. If you don't understand, don't worry. Just treat it as music <laughs> or sound. Um, and you, I'll invite you to respond freely to that recording voice that is there, voices. And uh, the invitation involves moving, so your movement, movement is free and involves voicing. The voicing is free too. And we will depart from this moment in which we are sleeping and we are in this sea of dreams. Now it's a common sea of dreams. And when it's kind of hard to wake up, this is the moment, okay? So I'll invite you actually to to close your, softly your eyes and be relaxed as you feel more relaxed. Um, and probably we put the lights, uh, can we put the lights a bit down? <coughs> okay, okay, it's, okay, good, it's good like that. Okay, so I will indicate the starting of the ritual with the bell sound, and also when the bell sounds again, the ritual has finished. So enjoy. Polo Tierra desde un mar de sueños. Grounding from the sea of dreams. Este ejercicio te invita a tener una transición de escucha serena y fluida entre tu tiempo de sueños y tu realidad despierta. This score invites you to have a gentle transition listening between your dream, sleeping time, and your waking reality. Despierta escuchando dentro de tu cuerpo como una criatura marina. Wake up listening within your body as a sea creature. Mueve suavemente tu cuerpo en ondas, como si estuvieras nadando en un mar de sueños. Move your body gently in waves, as if you were swimming in a sea of dreams. Impulsando nuevas ondas que se transmitan por todo tu cuerpo. Propelling new waves that are transmitted throughout your whole body. Respira por tus espiráculos. Breathing through your blow holes. Exhala suavemente, conectándote con tus viajes oníricos.
gently exhale, connecting yourself to your dream journeys. Continúa el ciclo de respiración. Escucha los sonidos espontáneos que surgen en tu voz cetácea. Continue the breathing cycle and listen to the spontaneous sounds that emerge from your cetacean voice. Sigue con libertad los movimientos de tránsito a tu realidad despierta. Freely follow the transitionary movements to your waking reality. Deja que tus sonidos se unan en un canto. Let your sounds unite in one homing song. Cuando este llegue a su fin, escucha los sonidos que han despertado a la onda de tu canto. When your song comes to an end, listen to the sounds that your wave has awakened in your surroundings. Conecta tu polo a tierra. Ground yourself.
Conecta tu polo a tierra. Ground yourself. free to open the eyes softly and just like when we do when we just wake up uh, and just feeling your feet here I'll invite you to take a moment to this uh, question for yourself what is it like to be grounded Look at the person who is to your left side and just <laughs> left and just share for a minute between two what is it like to be grounded for you? So you start to wrap up the conversation. They both have shared. Everyone has shared. It seems, yeah. Okay. So it seems lots of ground here. Okay. So. back to your devices and uh, write one word could be something of the exchange to your original grounding or your partners sharing anything that is for you the highlight or a combination Do you need the, the code again? Yeah. Okay, you you can um, Let's see if when he changed the slide, probably it will change for you. Let's see. Or if you just say, okay, I don't know. Um, just next, it says next. That's good. Is waiting? Ah, oh, yes, okay. Ah, okay, that's good. Yeah. 
not refreshing? It's not refreshing? Oh, okay. Okay, it seems it's not working. Mm, it's a shame. Okay, so because technology is not working, we can go ar around of uh, words. Probably it's nice to use the voices, yes. What is it like to be grounded? And we can just have a, a sharing according to the time we have. Yeah, yeah so um, just let me know if you like to chat. <laughs> Unfragmented. Unity. Confident. At ease. A sense of belonging. Anxiety free. <laughs> Good, so I'll be breathing together, perhaps, so I'll leave. <laughs> And thanks for the grounding. So we just warm up and just open the arms, just bringing this collective energy together. So imagine we are going to drink this energy of sharing and the commons here. And we drink through the palms of our hands and the full body. And then we come here down. And we accumulate that here in a very strong center that we remember when we need to remember it. And rest. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, with your belly full of grounded energy, uh, reading karaoke is almost coming to an end. We will end this gathering by extending listening as a reading. Listening as a careful, deep reading. The following performative reading is Checklist of Care, uh, written and performed by Sheila Dahlia. Sheila's checklist beautifully intersects the practical with the poetic. I think this juncture of the practical and the poetic lies in the critical language of care and commoning. I imagine my grocery shopping receipt could be the critical repository of a poetry reading in the time of a living course crisis. So let's not separate our everyday shit from poetic execution. So here I give you Sheila's checklist of care. Enjoy listening and thanks for participating with your beautiful contribution to rustling words, the reading karaoke. Checklist of care. Will engaging in this activity or event, performance or act be nourishing and full of care towards me? Will I be looked after? Will I get paid? If traveling, where will I sleep? What will I eat? When will I eat? Will I be fed or is it self-catering? Will I get per diems? Will I feel safe? Who will I be hanging out with? Can I bring someone with me? 
If something goes wrong, who do I contact and what is my exit strategy? Do I have any special health needs at the moment and will they be catered for? Have I informed anyone connected to the activity about these needs? Will there be any language barriers? How can these be overcome? Am I insured? Health, belongings, public liability? Have I got a contract? What press, PR, will I be expected to do? And does this feel okay? How does this activity or event or performance or act align with my politics and beliefs? Where is the funding coming from? What's the overall environmental cost? What do I know about the location or area in terms of human rights and politics? What do I know about the organisation? After the event. Has this activity had an impact on my politics and beliefs? Do I feel okay about the parts of myself I've revealed during the course of the activity? And if not, what do I need to do to make this okay again? Have I learned anything new about the common themes of my practice, e.g. Uh, visibility or invisibility, and hybridity, whiteness, trade and empire, filthy lucre, the precarity of a world that's tipped in favour of a few, shaking hands, holding, screens, care, plants and animals, foliage, certain landscapes, thistledown, glass, kitschy hearts, time, buried histories, classification and anatomies, families, movement, the choreography of objects, cheap theatrics or magic, intuitions, gifts and chemistry, hosting audiences, you, and words carefully arranged in patterns and shapes, listing, looping, over and over, playfully. How does this align with my overall life? Where am I at at the moment? Will this activity be helpful in terms of my overall life aims, whatever these happen to be at any given moment, and if such aims are actually achievable in the first place? Or will this be a distraction? Others. Who will my audience be? Is what I'm doing accessible in terms of language, non-arts audiences, or for those who are visually impaired, are wheelchair users, have limited mobility, are big D slash small d deaf or hard of hearing? If not, why not? And how can I overcome this? How can I be a good guest? Reciprocity. What will I be leaving behind afterwards, both literally and in terms of legacy? Are those I'm working with being looked after too? For example, pay, accommodation, per diems, well-being. Do they have any special needs? Could I employ local people instead of bringing others with me? Who should I try to make contact with whilst I'm in the area and what's the mutual benefit? Flora and fauna. Are the materials I'm using good for the environment? What about after I've left? What will I be leaving behind? What about travel? Is the environmental cost worth it? Society in general. What is the long-term message of what I'm conveying? Have I checked all of my language and actions to ensure I'm being inclusive? 
Am I reaching outside of my everyday circle of peers or friends? And if not, why not? If conflict or debate is impossible to avoid, what is the best way to deal with this? Am I self-censoring my practice to fit in? And if so, why? Is this the right thing to do in the particular context I'm working in? And if not, what should I do? Thanks, I just wanted to clap for me. I was joking, joking. Uh, thank you very much, Young Sik Choi. Um, for such a great special session. Uh, my name is, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Xavi and my pronouns are he, they. Um, I want to thank everyone to be here today. Um, as Anai mentioned earlier, it is our first live hybrid event uh, since before the pandemic. And first, I want to acknowledge the atmosphere in this room and throughout the whole day, which has been nothing short of uh, emotional and special. So thank you all as well for coming here today um, and for making such a great environment. Um, and I hope that it has at least, some of it has at least translated well online. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> hi, mom. Um, <laughs> Uh, before we go to the next session, we just want to say a big thank you, obviously, to Young Suk Choi, Harren Morrison, Helena Walsh, and Jimena Alacon Diaz for an incredible session uh, today, and uh, for BAC for hosting us so brilliantly and with such care. Uh, thanks also to Rachel and Rebecca for BSL and for the babysitting group for taking care of the little ones. Uh, obviously, a big, big thank you to Inclusive Digital and HowlRound and the National Cam uh, Captioning Institute, who are all, all the way over in America doing uh, live captions for us online, um, and for all the amazing work that you guys done on um, broadcasting. Um, we hope it's been as special for you at home as it has been for us here. Um, last but definitely not least uh, we are going to screen both here and for those watching at home a performance to camera by artist seraphine 1369 titled it is impossible to say everything here so i will leave you with this which we commissioned and premiered last year and is also available on our website uh, just as a warning the performance to camera has a deep nasty bass but nasty in a good way um, <laughs> And just as a warning, it's going to be quite strong. So um, if that affects you, just be aware of that. Um, thank you again. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And I hope you enjoy it.
It is now 2.02 p.m. is now 2.04 p.m.
is now 2.39 p.m. Yeah. 